you see I marked the can just so I'll remember years from now who knows when all this brain damage sets in but that was the tsunami red I'm always big on saying, <clears throat> one of my favorite sayings of all things, is life is an adventure, and if you know where you're going, it can't be much of an adventure. Well, this Spitfire project, hey baby, no idea where this is going. Let me tell you, more unpredictable things happen. Got up this morning, came down to work on the Spitfire, looked outside, another 8, 10 inches of snow. Blew away the whole day shoveling snow at three houses and shopping and everything, but we, we needed to go shopping. But one of the things I did pick up, and this is how to hang wallpaper. Now, within a week, a week from now, we're going to be wallpapering our bedroom and renovating, putting a ceiling in, ripping out sheetrock, I don't know what, getting rugs. I have another week to work on a Spitfire. My original goal was, and this was time management, was to get any time you can get and boy, this is a tip. If you can use this to your advantage, you can you can really put this in a bank. If you can get the plane to the point where it's ready to spray to clear, and then put one coat of clear on every day for two weeks, or somewhere in that range, where you don't try to get it all on at once, the thinner never soaks down into the paint, you'll have an awesome finish. Now, my plan was I wanted to be in the middle of this renovation, so every morning I could come down, spray for an hour or so, half hour, then go upstairs and spend 8, 10, 12 hours working in this bedroom that we're going to renovate. Well, the plan didn't work out because of all the snow. I just haven't been able to get my uh, my proverbial shit in, that, in gear here. The Spitfire is behind. We're going to start the thing anyway without being there. But I did. I have to read this tonight. I have to find out how to wall. I never wallpapered in my whole life. I also have to... Uh, this is... What the hell is the thing? I, Jewel, the Julia will know what this is. ZD number 74. What I did, I went to a, a specialty store and bought a bunch of different macaroni. This is just one of them. And I want to use, I want to try to make a mold for the exhaust pipes out of these ZDs that have look like they have just the right bend in them. Two choices I could make it using these, fill them with epoxy so that they would be strong, soak them with hot stuff, whatever. I have to find out from one of the Italians, and I expect the Julia to probably tell me this. <laughs> if you soak these in water, can you bend them and then hold the shape? I don't know. More on that later. I know this is this is going to be an adventure. And Adam Musco, by the way, has already sent away for some simulated exhaust, but because of the nature of this plane and because of what a uh, eccentric I've become trying to make the plane so nice, I really don't want to have some kind of bolt-on generic hobby shop plastic exhaust. I like to have something nobody else on the planet has, and then be able to offer it to anybody that's going to build a Spitfire. Anyway, the reason I even came down here today, I don't have any time. It's almost time to go to bed, in fact, and I'm tired. But another great tip, and this is the kind of thing I'm sure Alan Beers would be saying, oh, that was a good tip. A great tip, even if you... Even if it's very inconvenient, and tonight it is very inconvenient, come down. The ideal time to take tape off a lacquer is 24 hours. 
the minimum time is about 12. Now, I've done several of these tape offs. I've gone to work at 9 or 10, come back at 5 and pull the tape off. Oh, not so good. When a tape like this dries overnight, you get a nice edge. When you break the edge, it'll just break like glass. When, it, when it's mushy and it turns to jello, mm, the edge is not so good. Getting those nice, clean tape edges are just about, and I've done this over and over again, if you spray at 8 in the morning and the next day at 8 in the morning you take it off, it'll work for you every time. So I, I'm going to rut and do nothing else tonight. I am dead. I'm just going to pull off the tape, try to get nice edges, card them all down, put this away, and just hit the hay. Now one of the things gave me a little bit of anxiety is when I mixed up the paint and originally did my little paint test, it looked a lot lighter. But it did dry the right color. In fact, it dried. It's almost, there's the, there's the round bell and there's the, it's almost perfect. So I guess I just have to trust my instincts on this. By the way, this, this color here is very, very close to uh, Sig Dark Blue, Insignia Blue, so if, if you don't want to go through all the aggravation of mixing your own paint, there's no reason not to use Sig Insignia Blue. Now you can see right around here, there's a little bit of overspray right up here. I'm taking the gorms and a little uh, Q-tip and just on an ongoing basis. As I uncover each round bell, I'll clean each one up and go on to the next one. And usually a little bit of gorms and a Q-tip will take the overspray right off. If it's a real finicky thing, you might buff through. See, I'm going into the red. I'm, I'm into the red, obviously, right away. But if you go too far, then you got to touch up the red. But by the way, this looks like I just escaped here. The lines look just about perfect. There's a little bit of goop on here. I'll clean this up with M600. Anywhere there's a little overspray. I think I've really, really lucked out here. And the line, now keep in mind, there's no step here. I painted the red, I painted the blue. So in, in effect, there's no step. There's very little. As long as you mask that off accurately, you don't have that step. And what it'll mean in the final analysis, I'll need a lot less clear to get this that I can rub my hand right over it. There'll be very few spots on the plane. I think the invasion stripes on a fuse, the only spot where it's two coats of paint. Everything will have one coat of colored paint. It really does look like I got exactly the color blue here. It matches that book real well. And it will shine up just a little more when it gets the clear on it. I know that from experience. So on an ongoing basis, I'll uncover each one individually, clean it up, and that's definitely all I'm going to get done. In fact, I'll be lucky if I get that finished tonight. Blowing that snow around, boy, it knocks a lot out of you when you're an old fart like I am. Yeah, that tape. That's cutting beautiful, just perfect. Now, of course, when I actually paint the plane, I'll back mask this, and everything will be, there'll be no steps, ditches, mountains. Everything will be one layer of colored paint thick, I hope. And this is one of my philosophies, is you should do this on an ongoing basis, keep after it. Not wait till the last coat of paint to try to touch everything up. Besides, it's just nicer working on a plane. Another tip, when I did the yellow, I didn't card the yellow because it was still too soft. So what I can do now is card the yellow. Once you pull the tape up, it's okay. If you're doing it prematurely, let it sit overnight or sometime. But give it that 24 hours and it cards right off shaves right off. The whole trick is to get the paint 24 hours old before you pull the tape. Now I've looked through the book again here to make sure I got the right color. I don't know how this is coming out on video, but that color, and it's really, that's really the look I was after, that yellow leading edge, the round bells up here. That real, that, that's, I'm real happy with that. I'm, I'm itching to get all this paper off. 
I just don't want to rush it. I'm going to do the rest of this, and then we'll come back to this. The trick here is rotate the Q-tip and don't get the glue and smear it all over the place and then wipe it up with M600. And if you keep it after it, the whole idea, if you keep it after this on an ongoing basis, right, it, it's, it's just nicer working on a model too, not having all that crap all over the point. I just noticed a couple of things and I'd like to put this on the tape. This is this is good information. I've already worn out one side. This is what the hell is this? An AMA membership card. I've already worn out one side, so I've switched to the other side. And obviously a trick here is to uh, steal all your wife's credit cards and wear out the edges. Now one of the things this is what I wanted to mention. You gotta be real careful going over silk span areas. You don't want to use a card that has too sharp in the corners. I want to just knock that down. Another thing too now, and I maybe I didn't even mention this. Now this this round L for some reason is the sloppiest one of them all. Paint bled underneath here. I got some spots in the white and one in the red. Now, one of the things you never want to do is this. And this will really get you in trouble. When you have white pigment in the paint, or actually when you have any kind of pigment in the paint, you don't want to go rub in the red and then go in the white, or you'll make it pink and you almost can't get that out. You almost have to remask and spray it, but what I'm going to do is use one Q-tip in the white, and of course any multicolored, multicolored uh, trim job, and work all the way through the white, go right up to the edge, get that bleed out from the edge. Now, there really is very, very little bleed through and everything with the frisket. I have to say, that did work well. The tape, there's more bleed through, even though I did put some clear on it. It, it doesn't seem to be a big factor. When this is all cleared over, you won't even see it. But you don't want to go now onto the red or onto the yellow. I want to use one Q-tip for the blue. Chuck this one. Get another brand new Q-tip. Get a little gloves. And I expect to wear out at least one credit card per plane, maybe two on one that's got a lot of trim like this. Another thing too, and I, boy, this is this is believe me, this may save you a, a suicide attempt. You never want to take a plane, and what I did one time, and I'll make the I'll make the case for it. I took the red noble that I was building on video, and I decided, ah, oh, I put the red on. Ah, oh, oh, I'll figure this out. I'll just lightly sand all the edges with 1200 sandpaper. As soon as I hit it with clear, every edge went. It looked like the Missouri River. I had to remask the whole plane. And at that point in time, you know, spring was coming and I was really itching to go flying. It really, it added about a week to the program. It really blew my mind. You never, if possible, you never want to sand colored paint. You never want to sand these edges. When you sand them, some of the blue gets in the yellow, and as soon as you hit it with thinner, you're a dead man. So if you use one Q-tip for each, I typically use about five or six boxes of Q-tips over the course of a winter. I usually buy five of them in the beginning, and I'm almost out now. Uh, Q-tips are like, you know, one of the things you got to, you just have to use them up. And in this case, I'm going to use one Q-tip for each color. Chuck them out. Don't try salvaging them. I don't know if I ever mentioned this. This is this is really an absolutely true story. I made a plane, and I've I've had it on video from time to time called the Blue Angel. It was kind of a rip-off copy of Larry Scarinzi's Blue Angel jet. I made the plane. I got to the blue. I shot. I was in my my hurry up, get it done mode. I shot the blue, masked off all the yellow. 
back, masked it with newspaper, went out, sprayed the yellow, and at the time, something came up in the family. I don't remember what it was. We had a death in the family or something. I was out of town for a couple of days, and I left the tape on the plane. And like a week later, when I went to take the tape off, absolutely pulled up the paint, pulled off the silk span, pulled the ribs apart. It was unbelievable. So I guess I'm a little paranoid now about never leaving the tape on any longer than you have to, but not taking it off. If you pull it off and there's a, a soft edge, that's soft and you can't cut it off, it's kind of mushy and sticky, leave it on longer. Depending, again, we're, we're getting an unfair reading here because the, with the heat in the house here, the thing is coming out unbelievable. The stuff's drying up really in under 24 hours. Now any place where it really bleeds through and you have a little little edge, I can just touch it with the razor blade. Usually, again, you can do it with by feel. I really did put on a lot more blue paint than I thought I did. I thought this was much thinner, but I see on the bottom it's much thicker than the top. I don't know why. I guess I was just sloppy putting it on. Anyway, the edges seem to be, yeah, they're still a little high. Anyway, all these little tips combined, they'll just add to the fact that when you're all done, you'll have a piece of museum work, artwork, something you really can be proud of and just instead of just the typical let's get it done, get to the field, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. Cause, and of course, if you, don't, if you don't give a damn about the planes, which I, I find uh, incomprehensible, to me, the ownership of the planes having them is, is just looking over at that rack and having a rack full of planes instead of uh, a rack of empty Strega wine bottles or whatever the equivalent thing is in an Uncle Herb. I don't know. I like having the planes. This is all I'm really going to get done tonight. So I'll finish this clean up here, put this up by the heating vent to dry, and, well, dream about Spitfires is, I guess, the right word here. Anyway, this is coming out. I am very satisfied with the way this is coming out so far. And I'm sure Joe is too. You may get to see Joe up here soon for a visit. We can kind of put them together and, you know, see who's the toughest. Though. Now, every night before I turn it in or quit or whatever, I like to take a look at what's going on here. All right, that's it. Now, this is kind of a cool and unusual thing. Actually, the day before I'm getting ready to mix paint for camouflage, George Eno, Hermitage PA, sent this in. I'm going to go through these. Now, of, of merit here, of something that I'm definitely interested in here, is definitely the roundels and the camo. Now, this is a soft camo. Now, of course, George is a professional model. Look at the cockpit detail in this. Now, look at the exhaust. This is really a nicely detailed model. This, this one I love. This one I really like. The underside view, the scoops, the radiators, the gear back. And George is a professional modeler. He has been enjoying the hell out of the tapes from what he tells me. A little Thunderbolt in the background. Thunderbolt with invasion stripes. Cool. Anyway, I do appreciate these. I think these are really special. These, these obviously are not the easily made models. Even has the, the little red spots on the front. I've never found out what those red spots are, by the way. And the roundels look just about perfect. So, George, thanks a lot for the pictures, and gonna get back to working on a spit here sooner or later. Now, with all the snow back here, you can see one of the things I did, I made myself a pathway out to the back door. So, uh, because I'm going to get ready to do the big spray in here in the next couple days, just in case the snow doesn't melt, I'll have a pathway out there. I can work and spray out in the backyard instead of breathe. Yeah, 
and it really has been. It's really been too cold to even spray outside. So when it gets to big spraying, sometimes you just have to put it off, and today we're just going to put it off. This is definitely one of those days where you just can't, uh, you can't beat the system here. It's below zero out there, and I'm definitely not going out to paint. So I'm going to work on my wall covering, read this book up, try to learn how to hang wallpaper, and get ready to start ripping out the walls in the bedroom and getting, uh, getting that renovation underway. Okay, we're finally to D-Day, P-Day, I guess, paint day, whatever you want to call this. Now, I don't, before we even mix the paint, mention a couple of things that I've had trouble with in the past. Oh, I'm putting the wrong flat one. I've gotten to this point where I painted, and the, the, the plane was the MIG, where the top of the plane was red, the bottom was white. And what I did, <laughs> I had the flaps just like you see now and everything, and I went and painted and the flaps were reversed. So when I went to put the flaps on the plane, the white part was where the red part, they were reversed. And of course the hinge slots didn't match up exactly. So I'm gonna be real careful, and I'm not gonna erase the tape if I screw this up. To make sure I paint, I'm gonna do the robin's egg blue first. I'm gonna run a little test on a flap, that tweener flap. I wanna mix the paint, run a test, make sure I have the color I want. If not, I'll tint it with darker or lighter blue or more or less pigment. And then I want to take one elevator at a time, one flap at a time, and do the little piece like it'll only be blue under here. The elevator will be blue. Do all of the little parts first. Get the paint exactly the way I want it. And then our final thing, I hope, mask off the whole bottom of the mainframe and paint the mainframe. But believe me, you think it can't happen to you? It can. It happens to everybody. So. What I'm saying is be real careful when you get to this point. You, you, don't, ha you don't paint the bottom of this, the top of that, or something. Because everybody I know has done that at least once, including my app. I did it more than once. Now, just some of the things that can screw you up really. I remember when I was doing a tweener, and I had that uh, a rather intricate paint job with four different stripes going around each color of trim, and the stripes were reversed in the back of the plane. It was real easy to make a mistake. And everybody, I'm sure, at some point in time thinks, oh, I'll never make that mistake. Yeah, well, I'm real conscious of it right now. And I'm looking around. I put the whole plane together so I can get that overview. And I can look in my book. And I have the book so I can match the paint as close as possible. Problem is that in these Spitfire pictures, a lot of the light blues are darker and lighter. And some of the plane, in fact, the target tone version is yellow on the bottom. There's an awful lot of, there's so many options, it's ridiculous, but I want to get what I hope is going to be the most accurate of the light blues, and I may have to tone that up or down, I don't know yet. But just looking around at the plane, it's really starting to look like a spit. Now this is <laughs> supposed to be filled with paint. Okay, I want to show how much how much pigment is actually in there. Wait a minute, i got to get the phone. Nixon! Back to reality here. Now it just turns out that this color, I don't know if you can read this, is an American, actually an American Motors color. It's a little bit lighter than actually the Sig blue, so if you really were, if you weren't fussy, you could probably just go get Sig light blue and be done with it. This does have a little more of a, uh, looks like a little more of a tint. But anyway, what I'm going to do, because I want to wind up with more pigment than normal, I'm going to pour this, which is roughly half, not even half a can, and then a little less. In fact, another way I could do this, I want to get one can. Here's what I'm trying to arrive at. One can of thinner. The rest of this filled with paint. In fact, I can do this a different way. See, I figure things out even on camera. I can put the paint right in here, the SIG, and this is SIG light coat, so nothing too scientific here. But not fill it up. The trick is not to fill it up. Because if you fill it up, you wind up with the, and you can see what, a, what an ugly mess that makes. It needs to be mixed real well, shaken real well, which if you happen to be at the paint store, what would be a good idea here? You could bring the, the light coat right to the uh, store and then have him put it in a machine and shake it up. Now I know a lot of people that have tried to do this have had some kind of Mickey Mouse little problems. 
they either wind up buying a pigment that belongs in enamel or some kind of off-brand. This is DuPont pigment. You can see it looks like chewing gum if you look at it. When you look in there, it's, as soon as you mix it with dope, it gets thick as can be because you don't have the thinner. What I want to do is take one can. Now, where the hell's my thinner? And what they do is they look at this, and right away, it's Panic City. Oh, it turned to chewing gum. Yeah, well, I don't know that you're really supposed to be doing this on, in the real world. You know, like if you were a professional car painter, I don't know that this is a kosher thing, but I know it works for me. And if you're going to do this, the best thing is do a little experimental test first, of course. You can see how glocky that is. I know many times I've done this and I've thought, oh man, this isn't going to work. Listen, and, and if you do a test and it works, you can be pretty well safe in feeling that it's going to be okay. Okay, now the can is empty. Nothing in there, in fact. There are more interruptions today. I thought I was on a roll here, but I guess I'm on a buttered roll or something. Anyway, shake the hell out of the paint. Now, the idea is here, too. I always pour off a little bit of extra paint. Let me give you, this is really a good trick, too. This is the kind of thing Alan Beers would be impressed with. This is just a little bit of extra paint. So that when I thin this down, I can get it thinner, 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 just to the consistency I want. And if I go too far, I can put a little paint back in. Never put all the paint into one mix when you're doing this kind of thing. First off, we're not going to need it. Second of all, i got plenty of little parts to run a test on. And if I run a test and something goes haywire, I don't like the color, I'm not happy with the consistency, or I mix the paint and it turns out to be crap, well, I have a lot of other choices. Now, I always put in Folio paint. That's DuPont Fisheye Killer put in that real accurately measured amount of Flexol, which is supposed to be a spoonful. Do that 2,000 times a year and you'll, you won't have to use a spoon. Shake that up and that's ready to run a test. And it may seem like I'm a, I'm a crazy person running all these tests or anything, but believe me, in the long run, it always pays to run a test. And I'll mark this jar what it is, of course. And this, whatever's left over at the end of the job, will go into a separate box and remain the Spitfire touch-up paint for, you know, let's hope the life of the airplane. And let's hope it's a long life. Now, another convenient thing, I did this, I, I guess I could take credit that I did this on purpose, but I didn't, is I just happened to have the last color I sprayed was blue. So there's a little bit of blue in the gun, just a few drops. I can get rid of the dark blue, and I won't even have to do a, a super duper job of cleaning the gun because there'll only be a couple of dots in there. See, but now when I go to the next color, to the gray and the green, then I will have to clean the gun super duper duper duper. The rest of that little bit of blue that's in there will get lost in the gun. That won't even be a factor. But the big thing is I want to run a test and I want to run over and take that color. This will probably need a little. Every time you do this, you know you're going to need more thinner. That's almost a standard thing. I like to get my hands clean before I go doing any masking or anything. By the way, I just went out and looked at my thermometer. It's just reading about one degree over zero, so there's no way on earth we're going to paint outside today. And what I did, I shoveled out a little spot in the last, it snowed yesterday or the day before, I'm lost in a time warp. What happened is, I shoveled out a little spot so I could sneak out there and paint the big areas like the mainframe. Forget it, everything's got to get painted inside today. So what I'll do, I'll get the house good and hot, shut off the furnace, paint it. It's a good idea to shut your furnace off. Maybe uh, for an hour after you paint, the wall fumes get out of the house. Now, a good thing to test paint, think about this for a minute. A good thing to test is always the tip weight box. Because who gives a shit if you put 100 extra color? If this color is not exactly what I want, it's not a big deal. I'll paint over it 100 times. The tip weight box doesn't have to be light. Something on the outboard wing, something on the bottom. I'll do the outboard flap the bottom. 
it's a lot easier to do it that way than to go ahead and try doing the top of the plane. Always the bottom first. So I'm just waiting for the compressor to build up. I'll punch this up, do the final tuning into the paint. Then I want this to dry. While this is drying, I'll mask off some of the other parts so I can see the final color and then decide I want to make it a little bluer or a little whiter. I can add some white paint, I can add some dark blue, and, and still arrive at a color that'll be a Spitfire blue. It's supposed to be a, ro according to Steve DeJulia, a robin's egg blue. spray pattern. Let me get it up on a macro lens. It's a little on a rough side. It means I'm going to need a little more thinner in that mix of paint. So before I go on to another part, I'll put a little thinner in this paint. I have that little extra jar of paint and I can adjust the final mixture. See, this is why I do little tests. If I didn't do these little tests, now I'd be on the mainframe and I'd have everything all masked off, the tape would be sitting on the plane, and here I am playing, mixing paint. It would mean just one more inconvenience into the program. Now what I'm going to try to do, I had the, the pressure at 25. I want to try to get the pressure down even lower, because again, what I'm trying to do is get on that very thin single coat of paint. Now it's still a little rough, you can see because I've gone over all the orange peeling, but that's a little closer to reality. I'll have to let this dry and I'll do a test on my next piece when that piece is ready. i got to go mask off one of the flaps. Testing, testing, testing. When it's right, then I'll do the mainframe. Now one of the, <clears throat> and I remember this from the MIG, one of the difficult things is getting in all these corners with the tape going around because we're going to we're running the tape right down the hinge line, up one pocket and down the other one. And a good tool, I remember, is the old X-Acto to get the tape right in the corners. Anytime you're doing this kind of a, uh, a paint job, and it could be even on a regular plane, normal paint job, where you want to have the bottom of the plane a different color than the top. And by the way, all the world champion Chinese planes, if you've looked at them, including Zhang Dong's from uh, the year before, they always seem to be a different color on the bottom than they are on the top, so uh, maybe there's something to that on the international level, but I doubt that we're ever going to break that door down, that's for sure. But anyway, not to get into politics here, but this is a difficult thing to get that right down the middle, and you can't cheat it, because from the top you don't want to see the, the, the the blue and from the bottom you don't want to see the camo so you got to kind of go back and forth and from this point on you notice I've got the jar of clear already here with a brush in it you don't want to cheat any of the paint lines because this will be the last time we put tape on the plane I want to run it right down the middle and then right along the trailing edge again anybody that thinks that this is the you know relatively easy paint job forget it I'm sure anybody that's done this, this kind of job, you realize how much... It's one of those things that looks real easy, but when you go to do it, you say, Oh my God, I didn't think about that. And of course, you really do have to pay attention so you're not painting the wrong side. When you have a take-apart plane, take apart up to the last minute like this, you'll, you'll do that once, believe me. Okay, now I'll do the rest with tin foil, I'll lay the little area out. Then I can run a test. I've thinned the paint out even more. It's dried. I went up to the picture that I'm using here for my master. And it looks just about as blue as the, the bluest Spitfire in that book. So, See, this is why I pays to have all these people contributing pictures in, because now I have a lot of choices. See that? I did the wrong side. See? As I'm talking. Shh! Race that tape. No, we don't do that. And before I go and paint this, I'll go and put it right up on the plane and make sure. Because, boy, is that embarrassing. That's like building two left or two right fuse sides. Everybody does it. Nobody admits it. And then when you do it, you think, oh, nobody ever. I'm the only one in the world ever did this. Baloney. Everybody did it. 
Okay, I want to get all these corners and I can just slip the tape. Like I said, this is a relatively difficult to get that edge right down the edge of the flap. It's more difficult than it looks. It's easy to just paint stars out on a wing or whatever. Okay, now I can test this. I'll tin foil it up and this is ready to test. And remember, this tape, the split line, has to go right through the fillets, right around all the tin lines, right around the edges of the flaps. So it's really something that you really have to plan this out a little bit. I like, I like to keep it as nice and neat as possible, that's for sure. Now I can use the part that goes in a handle to get in all the corners here and get the tape lined up nice. That's a nice little tip. And get the corners pressed down. And the one step, you know, you can keep the system a lot of ways, but at this point in time, you don't want to forget to seal all these edges up. Get a nice coat of clear on here. Just around the edge. I don't know if I've showed this before. No matter what, we'd like to have the tape lines as neat as possible. While this is drying up, I can get some more parts ready and we'll be ready to start spraying this guy momentarily. Boy, it is so cold out there. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I can't believe it's this cold. I feel like I live up by Midgley. And by the way, Midgley is full of baloney. New Hampshire has no snow this year. They're in tropical rainforest mode up there. <laughs> I really, I think New York had more. trying, what I'm trying to accomplish here is a little bit better way of getting through the, the flap lines. I'm going to try to do this, make sure pieces along the wide tape. Again, a little experimenting and a little bit of fooling around here may result in either a nicer job, saving some time, or both. A lot of this stuff, you just have to go back and forth and try. By the way, that, that colored blue dried up just perfect. I'm sure Steve DeGiulio will just be jumping up and down. Well, he let me have it for considering painting the bottom of the plane yellow. No, God, gotta be Bobbin's egg boy. Well, you know what? He convinced me. <laughs> now, if we could only get him to judge the Nats, we'd have it made. <laughs> now, usually you find the best little tip of all on the last flap so that you, in effect, you've done all the experiment and you find it just in time. But since we have to go back and back mask this for the green, the camo, it pays to try as many things as possible. This looks like the most practical way of doing it, with little squares. But anyway, somebody out there will have a better way, I'm sure. Send it in. Save my day. Okay, this way did look a little bit better than the other one. Doing these little patches. We'll find out. You almost have to resign yourself to the fact that when you take the tape off, anytime you do a, a hinge split, you're going to wind up doing a little touch-up either way. It's almost inevitable, but it's not the end of the world, because the clear will bury all this, that's for sure. Still needs just a little bit of thinner in that paint. Did, <coughs> I just hit the orange peel with some 600 sandpaper dry just to see if that, all well, it is is orange peel on there, so now I'll give this a thin coat and then I'll get on with the rest of the parts. And who cares if this has an extra coat of paint? Getting used to seeing what's wrong is, is the trick here. This did is I thin this out even more. This this really covers good. I'm I'm surprised how good. I thought light blue was going to be a lousy cover and color. 
wooden cover worth of ship. It really covered well. I thinned the paint out even more. I got it down to about 20 PSI. And boy, that's putting on about the thinnest coat of paint. I don't think you can put it on any thinner than that. Really going on nice. Okay, I got all the parts up by the heating vents drying. How's the other piece? Oh, there's the tip weight box. And of course, I'll wash my hands up real good, have a cup of coffee, and then get ready to do the mainframe. I want to have my hands clean when I work on this mainframe. Yeah, that blue dried up about as good as anything I've ever seen, so I'm going to try to push this through and even get the bottom. It's so cold out there, it's unbelievable. I, I even went out to see if we, there was any chance I could do this outside. Zero to zero to none. So I'm basically going to back mask everything except the blue. i got to back mask the round bells, run that line along the side of the body, along the cowling, wherever that line's going to wind up, and get the bottom sprayed, and I hope that'll be it. Then we'll let this dry overnight. is going on so nice. I even put a little more thinner in it. Got it down. It's still got about 21 pounds of pressure. That is just, that is about as nice as you can get a, a thin, micro-thin coating of paint on there. And that is drying up just beautifully. So, now I have to, the reason I did this, I want to do one wing tip at a time. Because I have the house venting out and trying to blow air out and just a pain in the ass. Rather than mask it off and shoot it all at once and I'd probably choke to death, this way I can do one while well, that's blowing out. I'm, bl I'm freezing down here even with the door open. This is unbelievable. All right, we're going to start on the other side. Remember, the object of all this back masking and everything is that in as few places as possible, and in this case, the only place on the whole plane, that has double paint is the bands on the body and we probably if we were willing to spend a little more time there we could have eliminated that but pigmented paint is the heaviest of all the paints so we like to the object is to put as little pigmented paint on the plane as possible clear is less even filler is less if you weigh it out but pigmented paint is for sure the killer of most planes so even though this seems like, wow, it's a lot of work and everything, when, when it's all said and done and it's all buffed out, and you're two ounces lighter than somebody who just took the cheap trolley way and painted one thing on top of the other, well, you know, there's always cheap everything, and there's always quick everything, but if you want to listen to Pavarotti, you got to buy popcorn, and that's, that's the law, boy, that's the truth. Anyway talked to Joe today and Joe has got his fuselage in silver already so I assume uh, he'll be sneaking up on me here because we're going to be doing the house renovation starting next week get that bedroom going and then I hope we can get the two Spitfires together when they're all painted and I don't know let them mate <laughs> let us mate I don't know something Now we're almost ready to paint this panel. And then while this panel is drying, I'll get the tail and the fuse laid out.
okay, we're ready to start laying out the bottom. Now this part of it is, is something I can't really predict. In fact, I've been thinking about this for a couple days. To get the light blue up on the fuselage, I don't want it to come because the wing is higher in the plane than a stock plane. So I try to give the illusion that it's not in the middle and try to blend this up into the, the part that's going to flow there. Back here, I don't have a choice because it's going to end at the fillet. It's just going to blend into here. And then in the back, I try to match this line but have it go curving off the rudder. So a scale plane would match right up to the tail. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to run that right through the middle. And again, I'm going to look at it a lot of different ways. This is the kind of stuff that just takes some extra time. And I want to do this, like look down and say, oh yeah, how does that look? How does that look? But if we were more scale in proportion, I wouldn't have to do this. But it's, I'm trying to give that illusion that we're in the wing is lower in the fuselage than it really is. See, that trim brake line for the blue is going to go right through the fillet fairing and right up to the midpoint of the wing. See, now I'm doing a lot, a lot of eyeballing here and doing a lot of this just looking at, you know, what is that going to look like? Well, you never really know. The rudder. So I just got to back mass the mainframe and now the same as the rudder I run the tape right over the two parts while they're joined together cut the tape and then I know I'll have a good match when these parts go back together after they're painted Now what I also did, it's just one of my little things, I want to get the trim that matches the outside to go through the cowling too. So when you look in, the trim will be on the outside and the inside at the same time. And I don't really need a good tape line here yet. When I do the camo, I'll get that tape line a lot better. See, and I can get the, the paint to go right up in there, so while this is on, you won't see a different color inside. almost at the end of the tape. I have all the loose parts off being sprayed separately. The only thing left to do is to back mask underneath here, spray the top of the stab and that part, and then we'll probably be putting this aside to dry overnight before we pull off the tape. Finally, back mast. I threw some tin foil in there so I could keep the blue up top. I'd like to get that cut line inside the inside the uh, airplane too, if I can. This is ready to spray, but unfortunately, we're uh, about a foot or two from being out of tape. So I'm going to say goodbye, and we're going to spray this on the next tape. I hope uh, you know your day is warmer than mine, and I hope you're picking up some interesting stuff or just being entertained. I guess that's okay too. And uh, I don't know what else to say. Joe and I are real happy with the Spitfires, and we're glad to share the adventure with you. I hope you're enjoying it. Please pass the information on to other people, obviously. <laughs>